Hello, and welcome to this week's Movie Math, where this week the big story isn't on the big screen. It's on the small one. I bet you thought I was going to say something else. But no, we finally have a picture, or at least a first glance, at the numbers for June's big shows. We've been talking a lot about these shows. There's been a lot of chatter. Uh, but of course, just like with the box office, a really good way to actually tell which of these shows has done well and which have not are the numbers. Awards are also another big factor. By the way, uh, speaking of shows, the Emmy nominations are going to be announced on Wednesday, and we will discuss. But right now, we're talking uh, viewership numbers, and it's fascinating. Uh, this is this we, we don't have an idea of how the shows have done for their entire seasons, but this is, again, how they were uh, received when they first dropped, because this is for um, early June. So the big winner, again, out of the gate, is The Boys. In fact, the huge winner. Now, because that's just, a, that's a very big and impressive number. Now, of course, big numbers on Nielsen are partially fueled by shows having all their, you know, seasons count as one. And The Boys is now in its fourth season. Look how many episodes it has to, uh, counted for it. Uh, however, most of this traffic has got to be for the three hour-long episodes that it dropped at its debut, because I don't think this is people catching up on the show at the very, very, very last minute. Uh, I do think season four is largely driving this viewership. And as I said, that's a really good number. However, it's also important to note, while we're painting, painting a picture here, is that uh, the first three episodes of season four were quite the surprise for some of the people who have been fans of the boys, maybe up until now, because the show, of course, became much stronger and even more aggressive with its political commentary and more divided. You know, it tried, it tried to have its cake and eat it too before, but it really has picked a side this season. So we'll see how it, perfor how it performs week to week. I think the only thing that these numbers say for sure is that people were very excited for season four. Uh, we'll have to see what their reaction is when we look at week two of The Boys season four. Uh, but this number is so strong that one has to wonder why Amazon did decide to so quickly announce that there would just be one more season of this show. However, that's just one more episode of The Boys specifically. Uh, there's already one spinoff, Gen V, which, you know, it's proving to be popular. It wasn't huge out of the gate, just like The Boys wasn't really big out of the gate when it first started. When I first started covering that show, nobody was talking about it. So look at my look at my baby boy, all grown up, all grown up. Uh, so anyway, I think Gen V is also on track to become, you know, quite popular. Uh, and it's getting it's getting ready to start shooting season two, which unfortunately was delayed a little bit because of the tragic passing of Chance Perdomo. Uh, and then, of course, they've also announced a Spanish language spinoff, which is a very exciting idea, uh, especially because thanks to largely Netflix, which has led the charge here, non-English language content has proven to be extremely popular worldwide uh, under the right circumstances. Even a show like Shogun, we're going to talk about Shogun, actually, uh, but Shogun has, is largely uh, also in Japanese. And that show did very well. So uh, just because the boys, this boys spinoff in particular will be Spanish language doesn't mean that will potentially, I, I think it could still have just as big an audience, which is, I mean, there are a couple, like the Money Heists, I believe is a Spanish language show. Very, very popular. Although we do, never do see it on, uh, I, we would see it on this chart, right? Because this is things that are watched in uh, North America. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, so all right, but very interesting. And then, of course, they could have yet another spinoff. They could have another character on The Boys get a show. Wouldn't it be crazy if, like, maybe Homelander at the end of season five, like, didn't die and, like, maybe lost his powers? I haven't heard anything. I'm just, I'm just spitballing. But what if he got, like, lost his powers and there was a show about that? I'd watch the heck out of that. So you never, you don't know what's going to happen. You just know that this incarnation of the boys specifically is going to end. So, and these numbers are so strong, they clearly have a hit brand here. So something, something's going to happen. The boys, the boys ain't going nowhere. I'm so happy because, you know, uh, Invincible never showed up on these charts. Uh, also from Prime Video, also from Seth, um, Seth Rogen producing. Uh, so I'm so happy that the boys, even though it was so long between seasons, at least out of the gate, was still so popular. Uh, so 
Disney Plus and HBO would kill for these numbers. They would kill to have such a strong show. Now, House of the Dragon, only in its second season, comes in second out of the gate out of these shows. And it's considered an acquired show because it's HBO airing on Max. And that isn't going to end anytime soon, as it was just announced that... Uh, and so the HBO ratings, by the way, don't count on to this chart. So you have to factor that in as well. Although, who still has HBO? They should just... I guess they can't shut down HBO, but it's really messing with their numbers. But, I mean, does anybody here still watch House of the Dragon? on HBO proper, or are you streaming it on Max? Like, are you watching it on like HBO cable television, <laughs> right? Right, I don't even think they have the HBO uh, Go app anymore. Uh, so yeah, that's weird. But they're transitioning all the Max originals over into HBO shows to have that branding. But again, it's futzing with the ratings. So we'll see what happens. All right, so 741 minutes is respectable. It's a respectable start. And remember, season two premiered at the, on the very last day of this chart, Sunday, June 16th, at night. So we'll have to wait until next week to really kind of get an idea of what kind of numbers we're dealing with. Would it be nice if it had broken into the overall chart? Of course it would. But again, it's extremely close to the overall chart. I think it's actually probably like number 11. Uh, and it was only on this chart for a couple of hours. So I think next week it'll definitely probably break into the overall and we'll see how it does competing against the boys. That'll be fun. But man, Disney Plus ain't even in this race. They're not even in it. Forget the overall chart. It's struggling on the originals chart, the Acolyte, obviously. This is actually its second week of release, third episode, it dropped with two. But while it went up a notch from seventh to sixth place, its numbers actually went down even though, an, even though it added an episode. So what that means is that viewers aren't jumping onto the show late. Nobody's like, oh, I missed the first two episodes of The Acolyte. I better go watch them so I can watch episode three. Maybe people are pirate, pirating it out of spite because, you know, they just want people to watch this show. But I think that would be wishful thinking because the truth of the matter is, is that while Disney Plus has gotten a handle on getting people to talk about their shows, which does have value... They're still having trouble getting people to actually watch them. They didn't at first. I don't think they've ever had huge numbers, but, you know, out of the gate, those first three shows, you know, WandaVision, Falcon and Winter Soldier, Loki, it's excite exciting times, man. Uh, but we just, you know, The Mandalorian. The Mandalorian was a hot, hot ticket, at least at first, but they, they just can't get back there. Because uh, as many of you are proving, you don't got to watch a show to talk about it. Uh, X-Men 97 never made any of these charts, and Disney Plus for a while now has struggled to get any of their shows under the overall chart, some of them never making it at all. Loki Season 2, which was sublime, by the way, some of you didn't like it. What the heck, man? Although, where's the synergy? I can't believe that it seems Owen Wilson might not be in Deadpool and Wolverine. How is that possible? All right, so anyway, that connective tissue was the whole point of the MCU. All right, so Loki season two, and who doesn't love some Owen Wilson? But Loki, and Loki, I love those two dudes, but Loki season two was down from season one. It debuted, its debut generated 446 million minutes. The Acolyte, a little higher, oh my gosh, at 488, but then Ahsoka, 829. But unfortunately, after that, Ahsoka, set, Ahsoka settled in at around the 400 to 500 minute range. Uh, so does that mean that the Acolyte's new home is the 300 million range where it finds itself in week two? I mean, I'd say there will be a jump for episode five because it was so fantastic. Uh, but this is probably where the viewership lies overall for the show. And Disney ain't getting its money worth at $180 million for the season. I mean, it's very bad. It's not good ratings. Now, obviously, part of the problem is that Disney had to really get into the political situation uh, with Florida, you know, during the pandemic. And um, that's really, really continued to be an issue for them. It's similar to what happened with Taylor Swift, actually. Interesting comparison. In both cases, you have brands that conservatives originally thought aligned with them. And then when it's revealed that the brands don't align there, although Bob Iger's trying to pull back more into neutral territory, uh, you know, conservatives feel that these brands have turned on them and that creates a considerable amount of animosity uh, which again does not only seems to not be going away but but getting exponentially worse however i would also argue on top of that that when it comes to disney plus marvel and star wars shows specifically all viewers uh feel let down by the mouse and have their confidence 
has been eroded in these shows abilities to deliver. Uh, I would argue that until Disney Plus shows, particularly in the Marvel and Star Wars space, uh, until uh, they, they bump their episodes up to around an hour and have eight to 10 episodes in a season, they're just not gonna be able to turn their viewership around. And here comes Shogun as a shining example of that in action. Now this of course was a show on Disney's Hulu via FX. What's with this like roundabout way? Oh, it's an FX show that airs on Hulu that's actually on Disney Plus. What are you doing? Pick a lane. All right, but Shogun, so Shogun, great show, great show. Huge success to a degree. I mean, to be fair, it also really had a hard time getting onto the overall chart. Uh, was in the middle of the originals chart, but I think that's partially because FX, with all like with all their shows, did a poor job launching it. HBO is a machine. I don't understand what people. I mean, the, the HBO drop time is brilliant, and people are following that, which really works. And HBO really knows how to launch a show. FX. They're low on advertising, uh, media coverage, and also even with critics, FX hardly sends their show out to anyone to review in advance. So we're not able to build the hype for these things and call attention to them. Uh, if, if Shogun had been sent to me in advance, I would have been covering that show weekly. Uh, you know, I think may, maybe I will cover the second season weekly because you know I know it's such a big deal. Uh, but yeah, it just it was not engineered for success. Uh, but I do think that ultimately it really ended up exciting audiences. Uh, it's an Emmy front runner. As I said, again, nominations will be announced on uh, Wednesday. Expect Shogun to dominate in the drama category where it now lives because they are going to continue with the show. And we'll see how long that takes because they're still exploring season two. Uh, but I think that no matter how long it takes, Shogun season one was so good and people want, want them to take their time to make sure they get it right that it's going to explode when it eventually does hit. And so that is the way. Hour long episodes, some of the Shogun's episodes are a little longer than an hour, same like with House of the Dragon. Hour long episodes, eight to 10 a season. That's what you do. It's very clear. I don't understand what the issue is, uh, why, 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 can't, why they can't do that. Netflix does it, Prime Video does it. That's, that's, that's how you do streaming. That's how you do streaming content. All right. Uh, if I were head of Disney television, I'd go around everybody's uh, notepads and I'd write that down. I'd like give them all pillows with the embroidery on it for their offices. And I'd be like, this is what you must do. All right. I wouldn't, I wouldn't accept a show if it didn't have that quality. Forget the pillows and the, and the, that, that's the carrots. The stick is no green light. Then just to wrap up the Nielsen charts for early June, all that PR for Hitman seems to have paid off. Yes, let's talk. Glenn Powell, because uh, for the second week in a row, it was at around a billion minutes for the week and easily ch topped the movie chart both times. But at what cost? I still have some concern that Glenn Powell is now overexposed, just as Twisters is about to hit theaters. By the way, side note, what's with this weak RT score? I feel it's partially because Glenn Powell is maybe overexposed. We'll see, I see Twisters early this week myself. I see some people on social media already starting to turn on him. I see it. I sense it. What do you think? Also, is aligning himself so closely with Tom Cruise a good idea or kind of creepy? I'm like, what's happening here? Is this like Eamon and uh, Damon, right? Remember, Tom Cruise is in a cult and, and nobody went to see The Last Mission Impossible. I'm not sure if Tom Cruise is still a draw. The, ju the jury is now out on that. Are you your own star, pal, or are you a Tom Cruise stan? I don't know, this photo for some reason just weirded me out. And no one was talking about Glenn Palin, and everybody was just talking about Tom Cruise's ability to hold up the popcorn correctly. Hmm. All right, now let's talk box office. Speaking of box office, the big headline here is obviously Long Legs, which, yeah, might have been overhyped, right? The cinema score, normal for a horror film, but that RT audience score, that's concerning. But you know what's freaky? That this is almost, well, at, we'll see what, this is just the estimate. But right now, it's exactly the same debut. Exactly! As Smile two years ago. And that ended up, ended up making a ton of money worldwide. And the sequel is coming out this fall. Uh, it did, though, have slightly better audience scores than, um, than Long Legs. Uh, after A24 with Civil War, though, here's another small distributor, in this case, Neon, able to blow up an art house genre film thanks to a very clever ad campaign. Although your movie better deliver on the ad campaign. I think in both cases, uh, I haven't seen Long Legs myself, but I think in both cases, 
people were a little let down with the actual film, except for a core group that goes, you're crazy, they're great movies. <laughs> you know, the people who would usually go and see them. But when you open up these kind of quirky small movies to the mainstream, a lot of people are like, oh yeah, I don't like small quirky movies. Why not go and see this again? All right, so Nicolas Cage, he's already been kind of making a comeback with these creepy weird movies. In fact, though, this is very good news for his upcoming Spider-Man noir series, right? You're like, ah, oh, people like Nicolas Cage. But you know who I'd really like to see this help? Micah, uh, Micah Monroe. She had a moment, a real moment, 10 years ago with It Follows and The Guest. She's a great actress, very likable, very personable, talented. But unfortunately, she couldn't do anything with that moment. But she didn't give up. Good for her. And now, again, 10 years later, she has another opportunity. And you know, what about Osgood Perkins? Who? Who? That's Anthony Perkins' son. Seems the dude's been making horror movies, and now maybe, maybe he has the chance to level up, right? The, I don't know. The horror market is kind of oversaturated with auteur directors right now, but you never know. This is a very nice opening. Now, if I were a studio, though, the audience score would concern me. I'd be like, I don't know, this might've been your moment, buddy. I don't know if I, I, you know, I think, again, I have so many horror auteur directors to choose from. Why you, Perkins? But you know who he could call up? He could call up uh, Jordan Peele. He had a small role in Nope, it turns out. And Peele, of course, has a production company. So if I were Perkins, that's what I, or his team, I'd be like, hey, Jordan Peele, look at me. You wanna produce my next project? Now, of course, Neon, no matter what, will surely offer him a follow-up deal. They're like, stay with us, Perkins. However, he might like a little bit more money for his next movie, not only to play with as the budget, but maybe to be paid. So if he wants a, a studio, like a bigger studio deal, he'd need Peel in his corner, which is a real possibility. So I guess Osgood Perkins needs to decide what he wants to do next. But whew. Good thing Scarlett Johansson already signed on for that Jurassic franchise. Although I think Gareth Edwards, again, has no business hat. Forget not putting it on. I don't even think he owns one. Uh, but anyway, she seems not to be able to sell movie tickets. This is concerning. Because Fly Me to the Moon has strong audience scores, but it debuted in fifth place. Now, before you give me, ah, oh, this is not a movie for theaters, Sandy Bullock's The Lost City, also co-starring Channing Tatum, by the way. So Channing Tatum's like, it's not me. Uh, open with three times this amount, although it wasn't a period piece and it, it did have an action adventure angle to it. However, look, Hidden Figures opened at 22 million back in 2017. Uh, Taraji P. Henson, she don't get no damn respect. She's even, she's even making waves in all different kinds of ways these days. And Bullock's non-adventure rom-coms, like say The Proposal, also opened much bigger. That film at 33, uh, uh, over 30 as well. Sandra Bullock, obviously big star, uh, but you know, Sandra, uh, Scarlett Johansson is supposed to be as well. Is she, I mean, uh, that's interesting. It seems to me maybe she's not like a box office star, right? Outside of her franchise work, uh, Johansson's biggest opening is Lucy a decade ago uh, with 43 million. That's very nice, but she has not been able to repeat it. And then speaking of repeating things, Apple might've only spent 100 million on this one instead of the usual 200 million, but man, they're batting zero when it comes to theatrical releases. Zero, zero, oh, that's so bad. Uh, it's a good movie, by the way. I really liked it. Because of the things going on in my personal life, I ended up not being able to review it, but I'm telling you, great film. Hopefully it will blow up on digital. Maybe streaming, but it's a good movie, man. By the way, both Long Legs and Fly Me to the Moon did not have diverse appeal, uh, but Fly Me to the Moon had like almost none. Now that wouldn't be as big a deal if people had gone, if a large group of people, even if they were a homogenous group, if they'd all gone to see it, it would have been fine, but more people needed to go. And so that's a big problem for this movie. Now, as for the rest of the box office, Despicable Me 4 had an amazing second weekend hold. It fell just 40%. Uh, um, Inside Out 2 fell somewhere in the 30s in its second weekend, but this is just incredible. And speaking of Inside Out 2, it's now Pixar's highest grossing movie of all time, surpassing The Incredibles 2. I sure love anxiety. I want nothing but good things for my girl and for Maya Hawk. There's whispers that Maya Hawk might get nominated for Best Supporting Actress for her voice work. That would be great for Maya Hawk. It would be amazing for voice actors. Although, what about the animators who did half the performance? We'll talk about that soon, but mm, very interesting to me. But anyway, 
This week, its fifth weekend, it fell just another 32%. And it's at almost 600 million domestic. That's incredible. No wonder animated movies are getting announced left and right. We already had a ton on the schedule, but just this past week, Shrek 5 was confirmed officially for July 2026, July 4th, uh, July 4th holiday weekend 2026, while Minions 3 will take the July 4th holiday weekend 2027. Just like Disney loves to kick off the summer movie season, season, Universal has the 4th of July locked down. They've had it for years. They just had it again this year. And then this coming, you know, they just, Shrek and Minions are both theirs. And then 2025, the new Jurassic uh, movie with Scar Jo. Uh, now, so good thing that dinosaur is going to sell the tickets. Uh, now let's look at the sad part of the top 10. Hmm. Horizon took a hit this weekend for two reasons. One was that, you know, for two announcements. One is that you can watch the three hour film at home on Tuesday already. So why go and see it in theaters this weekend? And then also that the second film has just been delayed from theaters indefinitely, indefinitely. This is such a big mistake. It's such a shame because it was so beautifully set up. It was gonna have Horizon drop on digital and you only had like about a month to watch it on digital so you could get ready to see it in theaters. In the middle of August, where it's slow, it's the lazy days of summer, and it could get some big screens finally. And I'm telling you, the second installment looks so good. I think that was beautifully set up. Now, what's the rush? Who even knows if part two will ever come out? If it does, there's a good chance it's going straight to digital. And we don't even have a release date. So as again, again, as I said, on digital, what's the rush? And since there is no rush, you might now never get to it. What a disaster. I think that they should have just left it alone. What would you have done if you were in charge of uh, distribution at Warner Brothers? Don't blink, man. Don't blink. All right, and Maxine, whoo, basically a 70% drop and only its second weekend, although this has never been a big box office franchise. So perhaps Maxine, like the first two films, will find its, uh, its true audience on digital and streaming. But that's, that's pretty bad for Mia Goth. Also, another film from India managed to make it into the top 10 again this week, uh, Indian 2. Over on Netflix's charts for just last week, the holiday week, the new Beverly Hills Cop might not have been a sensation, but it was strong, on par with Leave the World Behind, actually. Now, that was a sensation, but that's because it had such strong holds week to week. And so we'll keep an eye on Axel F over the next few weeks. A Family Affair is also doing very well with its first full week on Netflix. A movie just too weird, I guess, not to check out. Uh, and again, it does have substantial star power. Then with shows, the second half of Bridgerton season three finally dropped down a bit, allowing Supercell to rise to number one in its first full week on Netflix's charts. On iTunes, as expected, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes is a big hit on digital. I'm so happy it deserves to be I wouldn't say phenomenal film, very, very good film. It deserves to be seen and I'm glad that people are seeing it. But it caused Furiosa not only to lose the number one spot, to, but to drop all the way down to number nine. Oh, Furiosa, that franchise should not continue. I would like to see Apes continue in some capacity. So I'm very happy to see it doing well on digital. And it did solid in theaters. It did solid, not as well as other films in the franchise, but you know, it can, it can hold its head high. While uh, Civil War is back at number two for obvious reasons. Uh, recent digital releases, The Bike Riders and Garfield are also doing very well while everyone's getting ready for twisters, as you can see. Plus Wimbledon was this past week, which is, you know, it's going on right now. Uh, and it seems to have gotten people back in the mood for challengers. Also a great film that deserves to be seen. And Henry Cavill and company are still thriving, still with Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. As for this coming week, oh, it's busy and controversial. Oh, wait till you hear this. So Twisters, will it be the big summer hit that we all anticipated? I think they might be advertising some of these movies a little bit too far in advance and telling us to buy tickets too far in advance because by the time they finally get here, we're like, oh yeah, that movie. So I'm a little concerned. Plus, you know, with the advertising strategy, the timetable, Plus, we also now find ourselves in crazy times, batshit crazy times. So will people want to go to the movies to escape or will they be glued to the news and online chatter? We'll see. I mean, Deadpool and Wolverine is two weeks out, although, you know, although Comic-Con's pretty sleepy this year. Uh, we'll talk about it on a live stream this week, uh, but that's two weeks out. But I do wonder if what's going on right now, particularly because the public convention is all week, 
that might be a little bit of an issue for twisters. Wait till I tell you something about this with the Republican convention and the boys. But we're not there yet. All right, so anyway, we'll see what happens. We'll see. Because conservatives also are very upset with Hollywood. Although, not with Universal or Twisters, right? They didn't do anything to you, man. Or, I mean, a lot of conservatives, in fact, back Universal as an alternative to Disney. So, you know, sometimes they want to fuel Universal as a result, as a big F you to Disney. So that maybe will help Twisters? We'll see. Also, I think that Rotten Tomato score is concerning, but a bunch of reviews are gonna hit in the next couple of days, my own included, so we'll see what that does to the score. On digital, as I said, Horizon hits Tuesday, uh, although right the same week as the Republican convention. Again, who is programming these things over at Warner Brothers? As well as Strangers Chapter One. While on Friday, you can watch Thelma at home, and you'll also, on Disney Plus, at no extra cost, so please watch it, you'll finally be able to see Young Woman in the Sea. It's such a good movie. Please try it. It's so good. Uh, and then as for other streaming movies, uh, the, the My Spy sequel hits Prime Video on Thursday, and Netflix has animated film Skywalkers on Friday. All right, let's talk shows. Very, very big week. We've got the season finales for both The Acolyte and The Boys. A lot of people like to hate watch The Acolyte, although clearly not, looking at the ratings. But the, the week of the Republican convention, can you, can you multitask? <laughs> I'm sure some of you are like, oh, I'll multitask. I'll find the time. And then also The Boys. So the Republican convention, as I said, is all week long, and its final day is Thursday, which is typically when, you know, the nominee who officially becomes the candidate makes big speech. Now that's the day that the final episode of The Boys drops, and I've seen it. It's very explosive, and it's also very incendiary from a political perspective. It goes there and more. So I can't help but think that they did that timing maybe intentionally, although I bet right now they're maybe wishing they hadn't, or maybe they're gonna own it. But it's gonna be a week, boy. It's gonna be a week. All right, well, with new shows on Monday, Hit Monkey Season 2 drops on Hulu. Uh, anyone still watching that? Anyone ever watch that? Got a season two. Thursday, Peacock has its own gladiator show. What the heck, man? From Roland Emmerich with Anthony Hopkins, although I bet Anthony Hopkins is just sprinkled throughout, called Those About to Die. Netflix has part one of the final season of Cobra Kai, and Kite Man, hell yeah, starts on Max. It's medium. It's fun. Stephanie... Uh, um, Sue is fantastic. She's so good. She's as good as Kaylee Cuoco's Harley Quinn. I would say, in fact, it's more her show than it is um, Kite Man's, which is going to annoy some people. You know whose show it really is? Bane. I love Bane. As I tweeted, I think Bane should have gotten um, the spinoff. Mm, I can't talk about other DC animated shows that are coming up because I'm still under embargo, but we're going to have some fun coming up in August. All right, so that while on Friday, Apple TV starts Natalie Portman's new show, which co-stars Moses Ingram, who was fantastic on The Queen's Gambit, and I feel bad what Obi-Wan might have potentially done to her career, and it also features David Cornsweet, aka the new Superman, uh, who's also in Twisters, by the way. Uh, some, Twist, some of you have seen Twisters, because it's opened in some other countries already, and uh, a couple of you uh, actually let me know on social media that you thought David Cornsweet maybe will be a very good Superman based on what you saw. Uh, some of you also said that based on his work in uh, Pearl. Uh, now, I've seen David Cornsweet, uh, not neither of these projects yet, uh, but I saw him like in um, Hollywood from Ryan Murphy, and I, I thought he was only okay there. Uh, but I, I'm excited. I'm excited to see him in Twisters and, and get another look at him. But um, big week, kind of a big week for David Cornsweet as well. Uh, he's coming. He's coming as Superman. Uh, why he's not going to Comic-Con, we'll talk about it. Well, it's weird. Uh, all right, and that's this week's movie math. What have you been watching? What do you plan to watch? And what do you think of these June ratings out of the gate? And we'll see, of course, how the rest of the month plays out because Nielsen is a month behind. All right, share those thoughts down below. Subscribe today. And of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.